Hey friends, so today I thought we'd talk about 15 things that I no longer own in my minimalist home. Now, there are so many things that I could have added to this list, but these first 15 were just things that I noticed as I walked around my house that I used to have always, but now that I've decluttered so much, they just didn't have any meaning to me anymore. Now, this list is going to look completely different for everybody. So if you have your own list of things you don't buy anymore, then put it in the description below. I'm sure we'd all love to know, but everyone's household is so different. I am a house of just three people now. My brother has moved out. And so there's a lot of things that we might not need that you would if you had a lot more people or if it was just you living on your own that you might need. So let's dig in to this list of 15 things that I no longer own. So the first thing that came to mind was a vase. Now I haven't owned a vase in a long time and it doesn't mean that I don't love getting flowers because I do. Now I would actually prefer to get flowers that are planted that I can then replant outside if I want to or pot and keep in my house. But when I do get flowers from my husband or yeah, that's basically it. He's the only one that gets me flowers. So when I do get flowers from him, I love them. But what I do use is I have a beautiful picture that I got, mm, I don't know, I guess three or four years ago, maybe more than that. And now I use the picture to water my plants. But when I do occasionally get flowers, that's what I use as my vase. So really, it's so funny. There are so many things around our house that can have multiple purposes when we really need them and we don't have the alternative. So I've just enjoyed using that picture. I think it's beautiful on its own. So that's one of those things that I just don't own is a vase. So the next one is extremely personal. So you'll have to tell me how it feels and how it fits into your life. But the next thing that I don't own is heels. And there's very many reasons why I don't own heels. One, basically just because I don't like them. I don't like the way my feet feel in them. I don't feel like I am comfortable in them. And I've never been one that really enjoys heels. Now, if I did have something fancy to go to, I have friends who wear the same size shoes as me. So I am lucky in that aspect that I have people I can reach out to if I really need to. But over the past I don't know, six years, I've just haven't owned heels because I just don't wear them ever. And so recently I had a pair of more platform kind of boots that I did own. And I just realized that I also wasn't wearing those either. So I got rid of those and now I don't own any kind of heeled shoe at all. And I just think part of it is I'm probably kind of lazy. And the other part of it is that I just don't feel comfortable. So comfort is a huge part of the way I live my life and the way I go through my life on a daily basis. So I have a fancier pair of flip flops. And when I do go out to like, we have a wedding coming up, those are going to be the shoes that I wear. So number three is one of my new favorite finds. And that is that I don't ever buy liquid bottles anymore of detergent for my clothes. But what I do buy is these like dehydrated sheets for the laundry detergent. And they're amazing. My mom introduced them to me and they work really, really well. I will link them below if you are interested because they've worked so well for me that actually my grandma has started using them as well. So as much as we can spread, don't use plastic bottles as much as possible, the better our earth is going to look and feel. And so this product has taken over and so I no longer buy liquid laundry detergent. All right, so number four is side tables. The only side tables that I own are the two that are actually connected to the wall in my bedroom that my husband made himself. And I can go into more detail about how he made them. Uh, if you're interested, put a comment below. But he made those, but those are the only side tables we have. We don't have any downstairs. We don't have any in our den. We don't have any side tables anywhere else. And that is because... I find side tables to be a crutch for me. There were something that I would very often get new ones and I would exchange them and I would get them from yard sales or thrift stores and I was just constantly looking for the next best one. And what I have found is that there isn't a next best one. And so really getting rid of all of those has allowed me to one, save money, save time, but um, save my sanity from trying to find the perfect one. But also if you look at our rooms, this is a 1960s house and the rooms that we have are longer and skinnier. And so having a side table with the way I like my furniture to be 
it just didn't fit very well. It was just a little too tight of a space. And so it does really depend on your space and your style, whether you want side tables or not. But for me and for this area, it was just one more thing for me to clean that I wasn't really using very often. Now, the thing that I do use that's like a side table is my little coffee table, my little round coffee table. And I have a little behind the couch sofa in this room that my husband also made. And those are great for storing things like your plants if you want a little decor out, but also your remote and your chopsticks. You don't lose them if that's what you want out. But I don't have any side tables. All right, number five was kind of a accident that turned into something good. So number five is that we do not own a dishwasher. Now, let me preface, we have one, but it's broken. And my husband, when it first broke, I don't even know, eight months ago, it is just a little sensor that broke. And so it's something that could easily be replaced with probably like 30 bucks and we could be using it again. But it's also one of those things that now that I don't have one, I realize that we don't really use it. We have gotten down to such a few amount of dishes that really it was just not necessary Plus, when we do end up washing dishes together, it gives us something to do together as a family. And I really don't mind washing dishes. It actually gives me a time to kind of think and zone out and, and process my feelings or the day. And so it's one of those things that I know most Americans love a dishwasher and it's totally fine if you have one. I'm not saying this for anybody else, but for me and our family, it works. And I like not having one. All right, number six was one of my least favorite things in all the other houses we've ever owned and in this one when we first got it, and that's having blinds. I hate those cheap plastic blinds. They drove me crazy. And one of the big reasons was they're very hard to clean. You have to get one of those little tools or I would always just use a rag and I was always kind of bending the plastic um, little blinds and so then they wouldn't look good. And it was just such a hassle to me. It was just one of those things that they don't bother everybody, but they really bothered me. And so what we do now is in my daughter's bedroom, she has blackout curtains down here. We have more of a see-through kind of curtains just to block some of the light. And that's what we like. I like to be able to easily take these off and wash them if I want to. I like to be able to change them out occasionally if I need to, but lines were just way too much of a hassle for me. So that's something that we don't own. Number seven was one of my favorite things that we got rid of, and that is dressers. So I do not have any dresser in my bedroom, and my daughter doesn't have a dresser either. She has like a little storage container that holds clothes and toys, but she doesn't have a dresser. And I think it's one of my favorite things because dressers are so big and heavy. And the one we had was this huge black dresser, took up what felt like half of our room, and it was another thing that was a flat surface that collected a lot of dust because it was black. It was very easy to see the dog hair and the dust on it. And it was another thing for me to want to put decor on. And so it was just such a relief when it was out. And having those big pieces of furniture, no matter what it is, if you're not using big pieces of furniture, you don't have to have them. Clearing out big pieces of furniture is one of the number one best ways to make your house feel more open to make your house feel more minimal is to have less big pieces of furniture. So getting rid of all of the dresser-like pieces that we have in our house has hugely opened up the space in our house and just made it feel a lot lighter and more airy. And that's what I've really enjoyed about our house right now is having less dresser space. So let me know how you feel about that. I know some people absolutely love their dressers and it is something that people like to decorate and so I know we all feel probably a little bit different about that one. Number eight is something that I gave up and I've never looked back and never will. And that is having decorative pillows on our bed. So on our couch, we have two decorative pillows that my mom actually gave to us because the pillows that came with the couch were very small and were starting to just be defluffed and not work very well. So these are the only decorative pillows we own in our entire house. And that is very intentional. I used to have a lot of pillows on our bed and try to do the whole like two big pillows, then another pillow, then a small pillow kind of thing. And I have nothing against it. But like I said, I'm kind of a lazy person, I think, when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I don't want to have to throw all those pillows on the ground or find a place to put them. And I don't want to have to spend my time putting pillows on the bed. And really, the big thing to me that really defined that moment is I thought myself, 
It bothers me. It bothers my husband. He hates doing it as well. And how many other people come into our bedroom that I even care about that see my bed? I mean, you guys come in my bedroom, but you guys don't care. So, I mean, no one else cares. It's not like we have friends coming over to go check out my bedroom. No, it doesn't happen. So if it's something like that where you're doing it, thinking it's something that you have to do, but in reality, no one else is even looking at it nor caring what kind of pillows or blankets you have on your bed, then maybe it's something else that you can kind of give up to if it's a hassle for you. So some people absolutely love them and that's the way they like to decorate their house. And I do find that it's very aesthetically pleasing and beautiful compared to what I do on my bed. But in my room, it's about ease of access to get into my bed. It's about ease of being able to make my bed in the morning and make it look presentable enough for myself, not for anyone else. So you'll have to let me know how you feel about that. I don't know. We're all a little bit different when it comes to that kind of decor. But to me, less bedroom pillows, the better. So number nine is a hair dryer. So I do not own a designated hair dryer in my home. And it's mainly because when it comes to my hair, it's very thick and heavy. And so a lot of times I'll just wear it kind of wavy. But when I don't want to do that, I will let it dry for a little while. But then I have this hair curler that's Revlon brand. If you've seen my bathroom walkthroughs, you've seen it before. And that has worked great. I just found that I didn't really like any hair dryers that I was using. And having to have a round hairbrush and a hair dryer was just more of a hassle than it was worth for me. Number 10 is a bedroom TV. And it's something that I actually do really recommend, uh, especially if you're having a hard time going to sleep or if you have a hard time shutting down your brain is not having any kind of bedroom TV. So my daughter doesn't have one. We don't have one. And it's really because I feel like our brains have a hard time shutting down when we have lights, bright action, music, things going on around us. And so actually for me, the less decor in my bedroom, the easier it is for me to be able to shut my brain off and go to sleep. So, you know, occasionally I will wake up in the middle of the night and back when we used to have one in our bedroom, I would turn the TV on and then it would be, you know, an hour or two before I would get back to sleep. But now when I don't have any access to anything like that in my bedroom, it's much quicker that I'm able to go to sleep. Number 11 is very personal, but it's one of those things that I feel like has lightened the load of my house a lot, and that's not having any physical books. So I had a few physical books for a while, and I've actually just donated them to some friends. I gave my mom one of the books that I recently just finished reading, and now I am reading a book, but I got it from the library. And the amazing thing about where I live, so I'm so privileged to have this. So, um, you know, if you live somewhere where you don't have a library, then I totally get how this is not going to work for you. But Uh, I am so privileged to have easy internet access so I can read anything online if I want to, but I also have a ton of libraries. So where I live, we have access to about six to seven libraries, if not more that I haven't discovered. And so between those six or seven libraries, they have tons of books that I can either go to those different libraries because they're very close to me where I live, or I can actually ask them to send them to my closest library and they will within a couple of days. So I am so lucky to have that kind of privilege to access of books. But that also means that I just don't need a lot of physical books. Now, also, I've talked to you guys about how we have little libraries in our neighborhood and I have access to three little libraries. So there is so much going on when it comes to books where I live that I just don't need the access to have physical books in my house all the time. I rent them or we go on walks and I get them from our little library. And then I feel like because I have so much access that I'm so lucky to have all of these books that I just want to give back. And I want to give them to people who either want to read them or don't have the access maybe to get to the library to read them. And so I just try to put them back in the community as much as possible. So that is a very personal thing. And that's also the privilege of where I live right now. Um, So I can see if that doesn't work for you, but I just don't need physical books. And also I feel like it's one of those things where often for me, I would have lots and lots of books on bookshelves. And then many of those books, I wouldn't go back to not for years, if ever at all. So just hoarding them just felt wrong when books are such a beautiful thing to share and spread with other people. So number 12 is souvenirs. So I don't have any souvenir cups. I only have these three white mugs. I don't have any souvenir t-shirts or keychains. 
The only kind of souvenirs that I do keep are if I find a beautiful picture that I want to take with me or if there's a beautiful pottery that I've seen that is very, very small that I want to keep out all of the time. So when we travel, we only ever bring carry-on. So I have a book bag and that's all I will carry with me. And also I will say that's very intentional because I don't want to bring a bunch of things home. I just want to carry the memories with me. And we have a phone that can take pictures for free. And so we're so lucky to have that. But I just don't need to carry all of those things home. And I had a very good conversation with my mother-in-law when I was talking about souvenirs. And she said she had wasted so many vacations looking for hours and hours trying to find other people's souvenirs just to find that, you know, people don't usually appreciate souvenirs in the way we think they will because they didn't go to that actual place. So actually just sharing your stories and your memories and your pictures are all that I feel like most of the people that I share my trips with want, and they don't really want the physical items. What I have found is that I buy very, very few, if any, souvenirs at all, and I try to just keep it to memories. All right, friends, we're almost done. So number 13 is paper towels. So I don't own any paper towels. And over, I guess, the past four years, we've been going paper towel-less. And that is because I grew up not ever having paper towels in my house. Uh, my mom just always used rags around the house. And so it was something that I only grew accustomed to because it is something that uh, was so easy to access. And what I've reverted back to is I just have a drawer of rags. And so if messes happen, things happen, we just use those rags and we clean them up and we wash them. That's kind of one of those things in my household. It was a no brainer to get rid of because it's something that I knew naturally I never had before. And so we could survive without them. So number 14 is Ziploc bags. It is one of those things that people have given them to us. And so I will wash them and reuse them until I can't anymore. But we have some reusable bags that we'll use for lunches. And we have some snack containers we use for lunches. And I have found that these just clean very easily for me. And they're easy to keep. And so I'd rather just not spend my money on buying something that I know is not great for our environment. And so I am very lucky to have found the Ziploc bags that I have. I will link them below if you're interested, but we've had them for, I think about two years now, and they are still holding up amazingly well. All right, guys, last one. So the last thing that I no longer buy in my house is shampoo in a bottle. So my husband has his own stuff, but for me, I have found some lovely bar soaps that I really enjoy. So the latest one that I bought is actually a Circle Purple Shampoo. That is actually one of the best shampoo bars I've ever used. So I think I'm going to stick with this company. Um, but this one is a purple shampoo bar and it lathers amazingly well, just like shampoo. And then it comes in a recyclable cardboard container. So you don't have to worry about putting another big plastic bottle out into the universe. You can just easily recycle the paper. So I just think that they work so well and it's such a no brainer switch for me when you can actually find one that really works for your hair. So you might need to test out a few. I know I did, but there are a few bars now that I found that work amazingly well when it comes to shampoo, that it has been such an easy switch for me and my family. All right, friends, that's it. That is 15 things that I no longer use in my house. And I would love to hear about the things you use or don't use in your house as well. So put them in the comments below and remember to throw a heart emoji down there and let me know that we are all on this minimalist decluttering journey together. And I hope that you guys will subscribe so I can see you next week. Bye friends.